Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back uh, to the session. Uh, it's already 3.52, so um, in order for us to be able to get back home uh, on time, uh, to spend time with your family members, we will start uh, with uh, Kuriko uh, Urashima from uh, NiceTap. She will give us an overview of the 11th uh, Delphi survey study in Japan. Kuniko, over to you. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> uh, good afternoon, everyone. And uh, I'm so glad to be here again. And uh, thank you very much for uh, everybody who is uh, giving me uh, this opportunity. So today I'm going to talk about uh, the, our current uh, foresight uh, uh, results. Okay. Um, because I already mentioned uh, this foresight survey that last uh, conference, so you might know the, the design, but uh, you might forget it, so I <laughs> should repeat it. And um, we just finished uh, the Delphi survey, so and uh, now we are making the scenario, and we in induced a new methodology of scenario, so I'm going to uh, introduce for that. Okay, our foresight started in 1971, so we are going to celebrate uh, nearly half century uh, soon. And uh, our current foresight activity is really linking with science and technology basic plan, plan which is our um, entire of science technology policy. So we are renewing this basic plan every five years. And we are now faced on the uh, fifth one, but we are going to make a sixth one soon. So that, uh, because that one it will start 2021. So therefore we have to finish our foresight uh, survey uh, by end of next year. So, and our current policy is society, we call society 5.0 because we have many technologies. Um, but we have uh, many problems, especially we are, we call <coughs> super aging society. And, uh, also we don't have many young people anymore. So therefore we are really focused on the future society and uh, what kind of technology we should develop for the desirable future. So therefore, um, society issue is very key issue in our foresight activity. Okay, so this is a definition and the time frame of the 11th foresight survey. So this 11th foresight survey is conducted from part one to the uh, part five, actually. And the first one was the horizon scanning, which I introduced the last conference. We developed our own software, which is called Kizashi. It's a horizon scanning um, software. Then visioning uh, is targeting 2040, which is very uh, desirable future or some maybe undesirable future. So, but anyway, we should know what's going to happen, what will be happen in 2040. Then also we needed to know the science and technology trend. So which is, uh, we call Delphi survey. Okay, then based on this visioning and the Delphi survey, we are going to make a scenario. And actually we made a scenario, some of them. So then I, I'm going to introduce for that. Okay, so this is a, <coughs> um, our, our uh, detail of survey structure. As I said, that we do the horizon scanning uh, every day. Then we needed to make a vision. Uh, which we spend a lot of time and lots of uh, people in, involved in this uh, visioning. And also we wanted to know the uh, technology issue. That's why we did the Delphi survey. Then based on this visioning Delphi survey, we need, uh, we needed to make a scenarios. Then also we needed to make another scenario based on the Delphi survey because technology will make a new future, uh, society. So, for example, now, nowadays everybody has a smartphone. Then our society completely changed, especially for the communication. So such an issue we want to know and we should develop some uh, new scenarios. That's why we did it uh, for these uh, issues. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about the visioning. 
Okay. As I said, we spend a lot of time to making the scenarios. So we actually, basically, we made a lot of workshop. And uh, not only this workshop is not only for the scientists, but also we try to involve many local citizens, not only the uh, professors, but the local citizens and academia industry and PO financial sector and so on. So we had uh, many, many workshop. Then, especially we had a vision workshop, which we invited a hundred participants who is, who is normally, uh, concentrate to their own, uh, research, like uh, physics or chemistry, so on. They never think about future society. So therefore we say that, uh, okay, don't, uh, please forget about your, uh, specialty. Then we should think about the future society together. Then after that, we said, okay, then we developed our future society. Then how can you contribute for the, by using by your technology? So this, but this is exercise is really good for the, uh, the scientists because they never think about the future society. So then finally, uh, we needed summarize for the lots of ideas of futures. So we summarize 50 future images and the four values, something like that. So because, uh, 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 as I said, that uh, we needed to know the uh, the society issues, so which means human issue is base, basic idea of future society. So therefore, we say that the flexible society brought about by re by the re uh, re 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 and uh, rethinking humanities. So. Um, today I don't have enough time, so I will skip the detail of this issue. But uh, we made uh, such a um, the vision. So now I'm going to talk about Delphi survey. Okay, our Delphi survey needed cover for all of science and technology topics. <coughs> so we made uh, seven field and uh, 702 topics which is from health, agriculture, environment, ICT, material, city, space, so on. So then we made it, uh, the, the, uh, the web survey for that. And this is a detail of uh, area and the field and the number of topics. So basically it's all topics, uh, uh, oh, sorry, all area is uh, like a hundred topics. And uh, so totally we, uh, set up the 702 topics. Then we needed to make a question, which is uh, uh, importance and the international competitiveness. And we needed to evaluate. That's why we put the number. Two is very high and one is high. Zero is not high, not low. And minus one is low and minus two is very low. So please remember this number because I will explain for the next slide using this number. So, and also we wanted to know the realization tech, uh, year of technology and market or social issue, uh, the realization. So, and also we needed to know what is the challenge of realizing, realization of technology and social. So human resources, budget, or cooperation, environment, regulation, or so on. So we set up such uh, questions. Then we send these uh, questions to through the, our right. A network, but also a government has a some network also. Then finally we got the, uh, 8,600 people who registered for our, uh, this survey. But actually, um, the first round of uh, question is 6,600 uh, people, uh, answered. But second round is uh, 5,350. So we calculated the, the, our results based on this second round, the number. So, and uh, unfortunately, we couldn't get the many uh, answer from the many young people, like the 30s. The previous uh, survey, we could get the many answer from 30s, but the basically, this time, basically 40s and 50s, the answer. And we don't have many female scientists, so basically we got many uh, male answers. And also, we couldn't get many answers from the industrial sector this time. 
uh, basically it's a university uh, people. So this is just example of uh, who responds to, to the, the, this our Delphi survey. So, so it seems we have many scientists of uh, health, medical, and life science issues but not many for the city, uh, architecture, civil works, uh, and the traffics. And uh, we needed to make uh, such a biograph uh, the figures because if it's high importance and high international competitiveness, probably company will fund for and enhance for the, those uh, technology. But if high importance, but not high, uh, uh, international competitiveness. Probably government is the only one who can <coughs> invest for those uh, issues. So that's why we needed to make uh, such uh, figures for all of the topics. And um, of course, as you can see here, um, we have uh, many different uh, results for the each area, but especially ICT analytics, uh, service science, it seems we are not good for this field. So we have to enhance for and enhance and solve this uh, uh, problem for the future. Okay. So this, I, 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 because I have many, many, many data, but I will show you the just the, uh, short, uh, the, show, uh, the results. Um, because we have many technology now, but, uh, like, uh, flying cars and drones, uh, able to the carry people in the urban areas, which is really related to the regulation and the legal issues. So we wanted to know uh, such uh, issues. So this uh, actually legal regulation uh, issue is uh, for uh, ICT and uh, health and so on. And the uh, LC uh, consideration, LC is ethical, legal, and social imp implications. It's basically for health and ICT and agriculture issues. Okay. So now I'm going to talk about the scenarios because, um, as I said, we have many um, visions, 50 visions, and also we have had 702 Delphi survey topics. So we needed to make a, we call basic scenarios based on this vision and uh, uh, development, uh, the, the Delphi survey. So, and, uh, okay. okay, sorry. Uh, actually, we wanted to have uh, many workshops, but uh, we couldn't make it because of the time, time is uh, really limited. So, but we invited 22 people who uh, was uh, joined the Pigeon Workshop or maybe Delphi Sabe uh, subcommittees. So they are very familiar of how to make uh, uh, the Pigeon and uh, Delphi Sabe. So this is a one of the results based on the Pigeon and also Delphi Sabe. So now we know the future Pigeon and what is uh, relating the technology based on the, this future vision. Then we know when will be the realized, and we know how to um, realize more earlier than the expected. So that's why we needed to make uh, some scenarios, but th this is a very, very big challenge, how to make a scenario. So therefore, we introduced I, I, IT, I, IT issue, because my colleague is really good for the data scientist. And actually, he created this Kizashi uh, system. So also, we asked him to, to make uh, the scenario based on this uh, lots of uh, um, vision uh, results and also Delphi uh, topics. So, and uh, don't ask me the detail of this clustering because I, I'm not familiar for that. But uh, anyway, um, this uh, way, I, I think uh, that the Pavel already mentioned that uh, they, they are using similar, I think, idea for that. So, um, basically we have a 702 topics and also uh, we, as make, we uh, analyzed this, uh, uh, the, the 
702 topics and make a cluster, which <coughs> created 32 clusters. And we are used the AI related technologies. Then also we needed to make uh, some of uh, uh, the scenario, which is uh, uh, close up scenarios and technology areas for the future by expert judge. Because we use AI machine, but also we needed to judge by uh, expert. So that's why we com combined together. Uh, so this is the results of the uh, one area, which is uh, actually this is covering not only one particular uh, areas, but this is covering like uh, um, environment, energy, life science, uh, and the city together. So that's why this is kind of uh, uh, um, intellectual uh, scenarios for make made eight areas. Then also, <coughs> oh sorry, uh, yes. Then we needed to make uh, the summary for that. So um, we uh, ha we made the this uh, vision uh, summary and also Delphi sum summary and also scenarios. So we are going to make uh, uh, scenarios for the six uh, science and technology basic plan. And uh, I hope I can give you the, this results in the April. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kuniko. Thank you for the very comprehensive study. Now we would um, like to invite uh, Dr. Surachai of Apex Center for Technology Foresight to share with us um, on this topic of research. Sorry for technical problems. Um, good afternoon, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. It's quite very difficult to talk in the late afternoon. It's about sleepy. So I hope you enjoy. Um, first of all, I would like to, to thank uh, organizer HSE for inviting me to, to be here and quite have a pleasure to, to tell something or to talk something. It, the news, the up to date, the story from Thailand, and my talk about how Thailand planted the foresight and how Thailand grow uh, the foresight activities and for the APEC. Um, my title about the Pradam Chief of Thailand National Policy, the crucial role of foresight. So my talk is not uh, about the technical issues, no white card. No data analysis, no AI, no bibliometric analysis, technology roadmap, scenario building, planning, anything else. Um, I'm here on behalf of the APEC Center for Technology Foresight and the Office of National Higher Education, Science, Research, and Innovation Policy Council from, from Thailand. In Thailand, about 20 years ago, we, we started the foresight activity based on um, the root of the APEC Center for Technology Foresight since 1998. And that time it hosted by uh, Thailand National Science and Technology Development Agency, or NASDA, um, but followed by APEC Conference on Foresight in 1997. Uh, the meeting has approved the establishment of Foresight, Foresight Center in Thailand. You know, at that time when I joined the APEC Center for Technology Foresight approximately 15 years ago. When I start practice foresight, no one else talk with me. It's quite foresight language, it's quite alien language. So I'm now quite happy to see how foresight grow and rise in Thailand. As you can see some uh, excellent activity from Dr. Piwat Ratanawaraha from Chulalongkorn University in this morning, it's some example. Um, we claim ourselves we are the first multi-economy level for organization in the world. If I may, I would like to quote uh, our first executive director, uh, Professor Dr. Greg Tegart. He said, once the center has demonstrated that such studies were possible and very useful, others will follow and will follow suit. Um, after NASDAQ, uh, the National Science Technology Innovation Policy Office, or STI Office, 
hosted this center. And then now, the Office of National Higher Education Science, Research, and Innovation Policy Council hosted this center. We know when we practice, when we do foresight, it's not just pre-foresight. We need pre-foresight. We need foresight. We need post-foresight. It is process. It is cycle. It's not just research and by itself. But the question is, if we complete, if we did foresight, how we can formulate the policy, how we can push the foresight results to the policy? This is very difficult. This is the art, not only technical issues. For my observation, I would like to divide, it, to divide um, our history to four phases of four stages. The early years, approximately start five years, the APEC CTF hosted by NASDA. We operate specialized case-by-case -case project, both national and international. And then the second five year, I would say adaptation and expansion. We offset, we offset, offset that many scenario and technology roadmaps. I carry out national level projects increase significantly in number. And the third phase, dissemination stage, when the SCI office uh, uh, take care of this uh, activity. This is a national uh, formulation of national policy. And now, this is the phase of national policy period. The current government places high emphasis on foresight as Thailand plan long-term plan national policy, 20 years national strategy, and Thailand try to establish a future laboratory, government lab, and policy lab are formulated. This is some example when we have done the policy in national planning. We have many sectors, for example, for public health sector, for agricultural sector, for industrial sector. This is one example of our current activity. We have formulated Thailand scenario for 20 years. And we aim ourselves to be developed countries. This is an example in the 20 years national strategies. Um, this is, we will utilize Thailand foresight capabilities and apply them to each to their operational context. Ministry, department in Thailand must formulate scenario for 20 years. So it needs foresight uh, tools and foresight application to its uh, development. As I mentioned, we try to set up three laboratory. The future laboratory is this is a foresight uh, unit. And foresight has gained more traction in every Thailand's policy making circle, especially in recent years especially in the Minister of Higher Education, Science, Research, and Innovation. He is a key driver to, uh, to drive uh, foresight activity in Thailand. And SDI has moved beyond conventional research scopes into more practical and proactive boundaries in the way of such landscape foresight acts as a major contributing instrument for the future lab. Now, next poll, my office has succeeded the SDI policy office as the policy agency of the Ministry of Higher Education, Science, Research, Innovation, superseding the former Ministry of Science and Technology. We have just established the newest ministries. Uh, next poll continues the role of SDI in hosting the APEC Center for Technology Foresight. And the next poll office has established the first time in Thailand formally to establish strategic foresight division in its organization to try to drive the national policy by using foresight tools and foresight methodologies. On the left-hand side, based on Professor Popper, we have done many tools of foresight at the green uh, label. For the next step, 
we hope the policy mandates specify that the strategic foresight division is to play an active role in formulating policies and plan regarding higher education, science, technology, and innovation related issues. And plan and strategic framework will be developed for next 10 years in the near future. And the upcoming next step in is the policy and strategic plan for next 10 years, where foresight is to function as a vital instrument, both qualitative and quantitative methodologies. Also, operational processes such as national surveys and horizon scanning are to be implemented and utilized. And we would like to learn from experience of Japan, as Dr. Kuniko has mentioned earlier. For summaries, the APEX Center for Technology Foresight hosted by NEXPO possesses multiple strong points that solidifies its capabilities as a regional and multilateral foresight hub. These key strengths are the ample foresight tools at its disposal, coupled with 20 years of hands-on experience, and a wide and robust network of foresight collaboration and partnership constructed and strengthened continues during the 20 years of operation. As I mentioned, Nexpo is policy agency. It embedded foresight division in its uh, structure. So we hope we can continue, we can use foresight methodology for national policy. All in all, if Thailand possesses a healthy and active foresight ecosystem, the APEX foresight community as a whole stands to benefit from continued process of Thailand and the APEX CTF. That's all of my talk. Thank you very much for your attention. Well, thank you, Dr. Surachai. Um, we congratulate you for your uh, achievements. Right, indeed, it has been a long journey, uh, 10 years of um, holding the fort and uh, now seeing the, the fruits of the labor. And um, yes, and we would like to invite our next uh, speaker, uh, Mr. Murong Pin, Dr. Murong Pin to share with us uh, on his work uh, as T foresight in China, methodology and organization. Okay, thank you uh, very much uh, for your invitation. Yeah, I know that, uh, I should come here. <laughs> it's uh, very stimulating and lots of works, especially I think uh, the Institute, yeah, making a great uh, progress. Yeah, I, I see the, uh, a lot of uh, work you've done is uh, very good. So time is very limited. So I choose uh, the technology foresight was 2035 in China. Uh, actually, 20 years ago in China, I began to learn from Japan and, and the UK and, uh, and some other countries how to conduct the technology foresight. So I uh, see... In practice, yeah, my research interest is uh, policies, science and technology policies. From perspective of policies, I think uh, the future technology is always the, the issue for policy makers. Therefore, I try to introduce first the background of technology foresight, a third one, the vision uh, for innovative development, and the third one, advanced energy. I, choose one case, one field, advanced energy technology. And as I said, uh, 15 years or 16 years ago, when Chinese government organized uh, to prepare the mid-long term plan for science technology development, uh, which issued uh, later yeah, in the 2006, uh, this is uh, the very successful middle and long term plan for science technology. In order to, yeah, to draft this, uh, since 2003, uh, there are lots of research. We call it the strategic science technology uh, uh, studies. Yeah, this is uh, prepared for this. At that time, also, uh, Chinese Academy, we uh, initiate uh, the uh, technology foresight towards 2020. So, so I conduct uh, that project that is uh, based on 
my previous works, uh, technology foresight uh, uh, for the uh, for the materials uh, uh, science technology and uh, the ICT. Yeah, this is two uh, fields. So I think this is a very important. Priority setting is always the issues, as I said. So this is, uh, <clears throat> and uh, the second point I would emphasize. You know, the, we we during the past year we always talk about the policy for science, the science for policy, and and uh, and <clears throat> finally our institute name changed. Before our institute name is uh, innovation, uh, the Institute of Policy and Management. Of course, this is uh, policy for science. And the reason that we change our name is the uh, Institute of Science and Development means not only policy for science, but also we provide science uh, uh, evidence support as the policy makers. So this is, uh, you can find as a sign during the past uh, uh, 40 or 50 years, you can find the, the science policy, science technology policy, and so on. And, and recently in Europe, we, you talk about you know, the transformative innovation policy. But uh, in my mind, maybe there are some similarities with my uh, uh, favorable uh, concept, innovation-driven development, innovation uh, develop, uh, development policies. So this is uh, uh, pay great attention on not only uh, the science technology uh, and to commercialization of technology, but also the development goals. This is, uh, so this is, uh, I don't want to uh, talk too much. So uh, UN raised uh, the SCG, uh, remind me, this is uh, for the policy makers, they pay great increasing, Increasingly attention, uh, more attention to yeah, these kind of development issues. Yeah, not only the economic development, but also social development, environmental development. So all these means the understanding about the development yeah, broaden and broaden again. So this is, uh, this is my understanding of for the development. Therefore, this is uh, when we talk about the the technology we have to consider the contribute yeah, to development in which way. Yeah? So also the last point that is very important uh, uh, during the, uh, uh, today's uh, presentation and uh, also yesterday, uh, during the past four years in OECD, the TIP, we talk about uh, this issue for many times. So digital transformation in my mind, uh, this is, uh, you can find, uh, lots of uh, practices. Some you can even say is practices is uh, go far beyond the research, than the researchers. So, so uh, the policies maybe not you know provide the guide for the uh, the, the practices of uh, uh, digital transformations. But I think anyway the uh, technology revolution and industry 4.0 uh, and the society 5.0 and the digital transformation. And this is uh, 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 very important for us to consider uh, the future technologies. So uh, 16 years ago, when I conducted the technology foresight, I draft the, uh, the, the vision uh, in 2020 in China, uh, six pictures. Uh, this is, uh, I, I think, uh, by 2020, China, yeah, this is a, a society of globalization and informatization uh, uh, society, and a consumption-driven society, and a new industrialized society, new urbanized society, and the recycle, uh, circular uh, 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 society. These six pictures. And I write a, 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 a paper, yeah. Uh, generates a lot of demands for technology to solve the problems in these kind of uh, pictures. Yeah, this is... Uh, so, uh, so this is uh, then try to provide this kind of uh, uh, information for scientists for the question need uh, when they answer the questions when they uh, try to uh, generate uh, the new technology topics. Yeah, this is uh, uh, very helpful. This is uh, and recently when we talk about uh, 2035. We yeah, change a little bit, revising 
uh, to revise our understanding about the, uh, uh, scenario, uh, the vision 2020. So we still have six pictures. First is uh, a globalization of innovation. Uh, that is, uh, 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 the, <coughs> and second is the digitalization of services. And the third one is the consumption health. And, and then is intelligent manufacturing, urban rural integration, uh, and environmental green. These six periods is there are some you know uh, overlap when we talk about the economic development and social development. For example, you know the uh, digitalization of services. Yeah, and uh, Sarah's uh, talk about the education. In my mind, the uh, education first is the public services. The digitalization, uh, uh, digital transformation of education. And uh, it's uh, the, always the issues it can narrow the gap yeah, among the, sta the, the, uh, uh, <coughs> the so uh, social stakeholders. Yeah. And also the uh, uh, public health care and the transportations and many uh, things. I think this is, uh, you can relate to urban rural integration. Here, many emphasize the public service systems. We need new technology, uh, especially the ICT technology, uh, yeah, to provide the high quality, low cost, and, and wide uh, coverage uh, public service systems. This is, uh, so the, all these provide some insight for the uh, uh, people uh, to uh, select the future technologies. This is uh, uh, second visions. And the uh, uh, third part is uh, we are just, uh, uh, we conduct about uh, uh, seven, uh, uh, nine, nine fields, technology fields. Uh, here I selected one. Uh, last round, you know, uh, 15 years ago, we conducted the eight uh, technology fields, uh, 16, uh, three, uh, 63 uh, subfields. These times we, uh, uh, <coughs> Uh, integrate some. So only uh, uh, <coughs> here I mentioned advanced energy. We can follow the methodology we developed many years ago. Uh, very s small uh, uh, change, and uh, you can find the fossil energy, solar, uh, wind uh, energy, biomass, uh, nuclear energy, and safety, and hydrogen and new grid and uh, uh, technology and uh, energy conservation and storage and, and so on, all these. So we, uh, the Delphi questionnaire is the same uh, as we did uh, uh, 16 years ago, uh, trying to uh, uh, compare with the previous studies. So, uh, so this is uh, about 90 uh, uh, technology topics. Yeah. So, so about eight, uh, 700 uh, 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 <coughs> participants, respondents. Yeah. Uh, so we select. Uh, this is uh, we we have uh, three uh, criteria. Yeah. For uh, the. the for the respondent to answer the question, what is important? Yeah, uh, first is uh, important uh, for economic development. Uh, we can we select uh, 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 here. You can list here the ten uh, technologies. Second, we uh, we the criteria is important for improving the quality of life. This is a, a social uh, perspective. Uh, of technology impact. And the third one is uh, the national security. National security is not just uh, mentioned the defense. I think this is, uh, you can, uh, uh, the eco, uh, eco is uh, risk is also security. And many, we, in China, we have 11 national securities. Uh, 11 national securities, that is, uh, so you can find different criteria have a different list. Some always uh, uh, stand in, the, uh, in, in front. 
And at last, based uh, uh, several uh, criteria, yeah, three at least three criteria plus uh, some others, so we can find uh, some uh, important we call it the key energy technology. Here I list. Here means uh, uh, three criteria put together, yeah, and also the advantage of technologies. So we this is I think this is priorities. So conclusion, yeah, five minutes enough. <laughs> so I think nowadays we are, you know, as I said, uh, major uh, task is uh, is priority setting. The resources is always, you know, uh, sh uh, shortage. Yeah, cannot uh, meet the demands uh, also for the research. So I want to uh, emphasize, you know, uncertainty, yeah, of the future that a lot. When is uh, relating to the uh, digital transformation. The other is relating to the uh, technology revolutions. So this is this kind of uh, uh, issues uh, relating to. Uh, <coughs> I mentioned here the, for example, the the, the digital uh, value chain relating lots of technology. Uh, so I don't want to uh, go in detail, and uh, the. The, some mega challenge cannot uh, result uh, <coughs> solved by individual uh, people, uh, country. Uh, so it's uh, necessary to call for uh, collaborations uh, in especially facing the future uh, mega challenges. So here I, I raised uh, international cooperation uh, papers you can find uh, in uh, Chinese. In is uh, in, increase very fast uh, to collaborate with other countries. Major is the U.S. and the European countries and Japan. So we have a, a lot of uh, 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 possibilities, but time is limited. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Dr. Mu. Um, yeah, for sharing with us uh, China's um, SN foresight. Uh, next, we would like to invite um, uh, Dr. Fabian uh, Gumbadimo uh, from Research Center for Future Studies to share with us on governance X.0. Oh. Oops. Good afternoon. Not so easy to be. Uh, almost the last to speak uh, in the afternoon. Thank you for your patience. I will try to, uh, to give you the result of uh, the main research we conducted in, uh, during the last two years for the Kingdom of Morocco, and uh, most uh, specifically the Royal Institute for Strategic Studies. Uh, we, in, this, in this institute, we have, um, let's say, a big picture that we, we design uh, during the last year that is summarized here by this um, allegory, if I can say, which is the subduction. We are living in a VK world with a very, uh, with a very high level of turbulences in every domain, while the world we have known during the last, uh, let's say, uh, 7,000 years is dying and a new world is coming. We consider that the progress, the traditional forces of progress, um, arrive to an end and are now producing more dysfunctionment than progresses. We stated that the future is built from our aspiration, our dream and desires, what everybody in the world is, is desiring. And all our acts drive us to make the future happen. It's not always easy, as you can, as you can see. And right now, we are just in, in this middle, where you see the, the small... Uh, okay, it doesn't work here. Okay, so uh, there's a small uh, flight here. And we are trying to move from one world, one civilization, let's say, to another one. Of course, you have resistance to change, as, as you can see with the, the red mini of plasma and, and lev coming up. And this is all about uh, control, dictatorship, terrorism, uh, whatsoever, you name it. But you know there's resistance to change. 
and we have many destructive drivers that are changing slowly and in an accelerated way sometimes our world. So the four major disruptions, I mean, on the top of all what we have already said during these two days, could be first technology. Okay, you, you are very clear about that, so I, I, won't, I won't elaborate, but just keep in mind that you have two solutions with technology, which is acceleration, and you can accelerate the way your country develops technologies, or leapfrog. And leapfrog, we have seen it just before, but we, most of the emerging countries now are leapfrogging directly to the mobile industry, mobile learning, mobile whatsoever, and not the computer. So we have just to keep this in mind. Second, second main uh, disruption is the shift from the value, the as value, the merchandise value, the value comes from money. Each time you can make money, you are creating value, but the value is also influence you can have through medias and so on, but it's, it's mostly monetized. And we can see today, especially in, within the young generation, new values coming, coming up. And these values are about care, about soft skills, about trust, and about what can make the world possible if we stop to think that money is the only way to develop ourselves. The third main disruption is what could be the end of the predatory economy. We all know that climate change is happening as well as, 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 well as the, the, the shortage of uh, most natural resources. And recently, the, the Intergovernmental Panel for Climate Change uh, gave um, the last information about the fact that it is not 150 or, or maybe 200 million of refugees we are waiting for, but 280 to 300 million of refugees due to the sea rising, due to poverty, due to hunger. So definitely we cannot sustain this uh, way of living anymore. And the predatory economy began to be definitely challenged in, uh, in several countries. The fourth description, last but not least at all, is the awareness of what it means to be human. In the substitution between machine and human, I mean, the question of efficiency is obvious. In most of tasks, a robot is much more efficient than a human. But the question is, what about a jobless world? What does it mean? How will we survive? You have two billion people to come from now to 2050. How can we organize our world in such a world, in such a way that we could both be efficient and yet be human? The increasing inequalities all over the world, and especially right now, the social unrest that you can see in Hong Kong, in Chile, in Venezuela, and all over the world, is really showing that we are at a turning point of the way we are developing ourselves. What does it take to be human? What are we ready to do to live in a human world? Or a more humanized, maybe, world? So this is with this context of VUCA and with these major disruptions that we have to do. Of course, most people feel uncomfortable with this change. They feel confused. They don't know what to do, how to act, what kind of decisions they can make. But other people are already jumping in this other world. They are already experimenting, inventing, innovating. And when you collect this different experience, you can see a new model emerging. This model has four main characteristics, two goals, simultaneous goals, that are being all together nature-centric and human-centric, being able to, uh, to balance exactly between both. And this, considering two major game changers that we cannot change anymore, the first one is exponentiality, exponentiality which is due to digitalization, as you know, and planetarization. The planetarization is, is the 
the awareness that we have only one planet and it won't be so easy to, to move to another one. We have only one humanity and a kind of fragile one that uh, you cannot just adapt immediately and which is not so resistant that maybe we think. And maybe the most interesting thing is that the conscious that more than humanity, this is a living planet. I mean, there is a new status for animals, for, for all the living on Earth, and this is beginning to change uh, very, in a very interesting way uh, our consideration for what is around us, from the way to eat meat, uh, to the way you treat animals or, or plants even. So we can see this, this new model is emerging. I won't, I won't enter in, but it is very much like our uh, Thailandese friends presented it uh, today and, and mainly yesterday. So it's exactly built on the same, uh, uh, same analysis. And what we can see is, is that this new model is already producing a new, new economy. So yet this new economy, the, the main problem it has, it is not going nature, going human-centric. It is not dealing with digitalization or with planetarization even, but it mainly to try to bridge these four pillars and the only bridge between them is governance. Without governance, none of what we talked before could happen. Governance is the key. The key to be able to free energies, to let people innovate and change. I can't elaborate more because you have a 200 pages report that you, that might be, that will be available uh, before Christmas and uh, free to download. But I would like only to give you a, a compass. I mean, the, the compass we, we elaborate. So first, there are six, six axes to develop a, a governance X.0. The first is flexibility and anticipation. I mean, try to develop policy who are resistant to adaptation, able to facilitate adaptation and in the same time to be consistent in, uh, in adaptation. The second one is a rationalization of resources, of course, and uses. Science and fact-based policy design, which is maybe the most innovative. As you know, most of the time you have experts, you have uh, data, you have quantitative analysis, and you have to balance them with um, awareness, conscious, perceptions, intuitions, and how people feel with this information. Because it's not enough to say this is how we experts see the world. If population, if citizen wants the world in the same way, you will not be able to apply your policies. So having a, a, a much more pedagogical and, and science fact-based uh, policy design is really part of this governance X.0. Developing justice and ethics, but you know already about this. Collective intelligence, of course, is part of it. I would just just remind most of, uh, of uh, you colleagues that uh, at the end of the last World War II, participatory processes has been made the core of foresight in Europe. It is not something new. It is 60 years that we are practicing collective intelligence, participatory processes. So it's ex is extending now, but this is absolutely not something new. And if foresight can develop itself, it's only because it is participatory uh, process based, which is the only way to include people and to have people appropriate the results of uh, foresight. And finally, finally, last but not least, the devolution of power. And you can see today, even in, in Africa, for example, I'm, I'm working a lot in, in Africa, that even in the most uh, centralized countries, and I would say even with uh, some dictators, uh, you will have a movement of devolution of power. This is really uh, manifest, especially since, let's say, um, the beginning of this century. But devolution is really growing everywhere. And this is the key to get responsibility and to get the real development 
of territories. Some examples of this, for example, uh, considering the devolution of power, uh, the European Union invented uh, in the 90s the concept of subsidiarity. Subsidiarity is about the fact that a problem will find its solution at the level at which the problem is created, which means that if you have a problem in the cities, the problem will not be solved at the regional level or at the central level, but only at the level of the city or by the authority of the city. So the subsidiarity is really something important regarding planetarization, for example. Uh, flexibility, adaptation, anticipation, of course. Uh, we have, for example, the program of uh, Singapore, and maybe our colleague could, uh, could tell me more, uh, could tell, tell us more about this, which is named uh, Skill Futures, uh, which is about the fact to provide uh, Singaporean citizens with, uh, with specific needs they would need in the, in the future development of the country. Climate, climate justice is also a very interesting um, example of how justice can, can be born not from law, but from judges and from jurisprudence. If you, if you look at Pakistan, Netherlands, or Canada, they all have uh, climate justice now according some rights to, uh, to climate refugees, which is not something that is in, in the constitution or in the laws, but has been born or was born from jurisprudence. In Finland, you could find a, a, an example of country embedding foresight uh, since quite a long time, 1993, in order to design its policies. In Morocco, the Royal Institute of Strategic Studies was built exactly to do the same. It's more recent. It is uh, from uh, 1908. And uh, the Royal Institute is, has been made to think the future in order to rethink the development of Morocco. And I insist so, on the second part of the sentence. It is not thinking the future to think the future. It is a very operational way of thinking the future. It is thinking for rethinking, for reorganizing the present in order to prepare the future. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Fabian. Um, next, we would like to um, invite uh, Comcrit uh, Sivara from PTT, Petroleum Authority of Thailand, to share with us a foresight for the city, community, and business transformation, future perspective of PTT. So, uh, thank you for your kind introduction. Thanks to Ocean for inviting me. So, uh, yesterday and today, you heard a lot about foresight activity in Thailand from research, probably from Chulalongkorn University to national policy from Dr. Sulochai. So it's now my turn to share the corporate point of view on foresight. So earlier this year, we host a public foresight event called Bangkok Foresight 2030. So the goal is to bring young generation from various sectors to foresee the future of the city of their own city in different scenarios. So today's presentation, we'll share about rational experiences and some key takeaway from the event. So first, let me give some background about my company, PTT Public Company Limited, and why are we interested in foresight. So we used to be called Petroleum Authority of Thailand, and some of you may wonder why PTT, not PAT. So it's because PAT belongs to Port Authority of Thailand, and they exhibit before us, so we have to, you know, settle with PTT then. Anyway, so we are the state-owned oil and gas company, so that means 50% of our shares are owned by the government. So our business focusing on the whole petroleum value chain from upstream, which is petroleum exploration and production, to downstream, which is retail and petrochemical business. We are the largest company in Thailand in terms of revenues, and a few years ago, we also listed on Fortune 100 company. 
So apart from conventional petroleum and petrochemical business, we also shift our business to non-oil products and services. About 15 years ago, we found a unicorn in our company, which is the coffee shop called Cafe Amazon. So why we call it unicorn? Because for the past three years, the total revenue combined is exceeds one billion US dollar. So the next big question is, what is our new unicorn? So moreover, if you investigate in what our business really is now today, you see that most of the business are operated by PT affiliate or subsidies. And in the future, is it really likely that gas unit will also spin off to be a new company that will leave PTT as a holding company? So it's a big task for you know, technology and engineering business unit, which led by the CTO, to define a new business or the new unicorn of PTT. And we believe that Foresight Tools will be able to help us achieve that. So the event is co-hosted by two teams. The first one which I'm coming from is, are the Innovation Institute. We are the corporate R&D exhibit 20 years ago to serve business unit. So we are, we are also facing difficulty because all the business unit are gone, you know, they are all spin off. So the big question is who do we serve now? And what are we going to do with 63 chemical and petroleum business you know, a petroleum-based researcher that we have. So if Foresight can identify the technology that we want to move for, then we will have time to reskill those researchers. The other teams are a new team which established around less than four years ago. It's, they call Expresso. It stands for Express Solution. So it's a team comprised of a young talent, mostly our PTT sponsor scholarship, so they define themselves as a small ship to explore new opportunities and come back to inform news to the big ship, which is the, the corporate. So they're focusing on VC, you know, venture capital, venture builder, and also venture platform. So why Bangkok? So why we start from Bangkok? So as you have heard a lot from yesterday presentation from Chula Alongkorn researcher team, the popula population in Bangkok are increasing every year, accounted for both local and tourists. We also have a problem with aging society. One of the most concerned is we are one of the lowest fertility rate and also income. That means too few babies, too few workers, and too many old people. So a shingling labor force will hold back economic growth, which is bad for emerging countries like us. And the, the other reason, which is one of the most important changes to come are the infrastructure of the city. So on the left-hand side are the current metro system, and on the right are on the plan and the ongoing development which will be done in the next couple of years. You will see it's a huge difference from what we have today. So like I said, the, the objective of the, the event that we host is we want to work with active citizens to foresee what the development of the Bangkok would be like in 2030, with different scenario ranging from optimistic to pessimistic perspective. So the finding would lead to the insight for community, city, community, and also business transformation for us. The event will be uh, hosted two days. The first day, uh, we invite experts to do, uh, give talk about ten analysis. And the second day are mostly workshop for ideation and also scenario analysis development. And the later part will be done internal. So we will analyze on those scenarios and what is the business impact for us. And also we're doing the strategy development, also strategic execution. So the key emphasis is for the participation, multiple perspective, chain management, and also collaboration. So we invited and selected like 50, around 50 future leaders of the Bangkok with a mix of both the private and also government, and also some of the family-owned business and some entrepreneurship. Those are the represent of those 50. So the first day we 
invite experts to sharing insights and experience. So we follow the Steve V. So we invite you know uh, from social uh, technology, economics, and law and regulation, and we lucky enough to get a deputy minister at that time from Minister Ministry of Transport to be a keynote to talk about the infrastructure change of the city. And the rest, there are so many familiar faces like Sarah or Apiwat on the screen. So the information from the first day, we digest it and then we make it easier to understand. We put it into, into the infographics and then let the participant understand what is going on right now in Bangkok. So this is some of the pictures of the event. So you can see that they are all very active engagement and there are QR code on the right top hand side is a, is, is a link to the video that if you're interested, you can see it, but sorry, it's, it will be in Thai. So we develop a general development. So there are two by two metrics again. So the, on the Y axis is the livability of the Bangkok and the X exit is a city development. So before we doing the workshop, we let the participant vote what is the current situation in Bangkok and they vote it to be lower right hand side. It's not super right. Yeah. So from foresight to strategy development. So it's very similar to what Shell have done. So we analyze each scenario and we map it with the like the energy sector, uh, how energy will be used in each scenario, what is the mobility we would like, how's the space and living in each scenario, and then we map it with the, our current business. What is, what is the implication to our PTT business right now? And the green is like positive, yellow is neutral, and red is negative. This is just one of the example. So we explore the new business opportunity and also the strategic action for existing business. And lastly, the foresight to the city. So we have been working with the strategy and evaluation department of Bangkok Metropolitan Administration. The first thing we agree on is that normally they will have one strategic plan for the city, but that's not the case with Bangkok because we have 50 districts and each one of them have their own difference and their own pain point. So that's why it never worked out and citizens losing trust to the government. So next year, they will do a strategic planning on a smaller area based focus and they want us to be partnered to connect them with the active citizen. And lastly, we also ongoing discussion with them about setting up the city lab, just like many projects in many cities in the European Union. The idea was to test new solution, exchange practice, and also convince the regulators to comply. That's all, thank you for your attention. Right, thank you, Kamakrit, for um, sharing with us uh, the foresight journey with uh, PTT. Now we would like to open the floor uh, for questions. Yeah. Uh, suggestion, then a question, perhaps, uh, to the gentleman from China. Uh, it became clear more recently that the international collaboration between uh, of China, these figures are partly influenced by Chinese-Chinese uh, Chinese collaborations where one of the partners is in the USA. That is a very good question. Uh, however, our Chinese colleague uh, is out there doing an interview. Uh, maybe when he's back, we would uh, communicate your question to him. Yeah, neither do we. <laughs> yeah. Uh, are there any other questions? Yes, Jose. Okay, uh, to uh, concrete, I don't know if you uh, heard my presentation earlier on, uh, because uh, petroleum is dead, especially in Thailand. In Thailand, grid parity was reached uh, three years ago, so no new addition of any fossil fuels compared to solar power. 
Um, that's my view. But anyway, what, what is your point of view since you still have the word uh, petroleum? <laughs> yeah, Oshkan told me at the break that I will get the question from you definitely. <laughs> and I will. Okay. So, I mean, from my personal point of view, I think uh, it will take time for us to, I mean, embrace EV. Because one of the reasons is that uh, diesel, I mean, we, I agree with you that gasoline will be there first, and diesel will follow, because for truck, we still need diesel to operate. I mean, electric vehicle cannot replace diesel for the truck, I mean, for the big, big vehicle. Fuel cell will be maybe another answer to that kind of you know, uh, application. So I think that diesel will be here to stay for, for longer. But gasoline, definitely, I mean, it will, it will be, have a lot of effect for the EV. And for the Thailand, uh, because I think we also have one of the worst traffic in the world, right? Just, just like in Moscow, right? And the traffic is like, it's unpredictable. I mean, if one EV die, it will be like domino effect, you know. The traffic will be even worse, and the other EV will die, and you know it will be like. Uh, so I think it will take time, but it will definitely come one day. So that's why we need foresight to to transform our business. Thank you, Kamkrit. So we have a question from Joe. <clears throat> Thanks. Um, so, to continue uh, the long-running theme of uh, power and competition and possible conflict in the foresight world, uh, so, and this I think uh, it goes particularly to Fabian, but uh, also to the others. Um, what comes over from the presentations? Great presentations. Thank you. It's a very neutral, uh, science knows best kind of worldview. Uh, which is great because in this room, I think most of us are scientists or academics or you know, highly educated people. But there are other forces. Uh, I myself have experienced foresight uh, in a number of countries as a political uh, football. It's kicked this way and that way. Uh, and, you know, you're on a consultancy. You have to get your money or something. Uh, you better do what the client wants, uh, etc. So you see this more than, uh, sometimes more than others. To Fabian, I would uh, ask um, great ideas. What could possibly go wrong? Could the governance X.0 model be uh, hijacked by uh, forces of higher powers, like uh, the global financial system, uh, or McKinsey, maybe, uh, or advising, you know, uh, and, and so on and so on? Or in the case of uh, Morocco, I think there is a lot of politics within Africa, pushing and pulling. To the others, I would say, um, do you have any examples from each of your projects of conflict or argument or disagreement in the foresight process? And how did you manage it? Yeah. Maybe we'll let uh, Fabian answer the question first. Well, um, I didn't have a lot of time to elaborate and to explain how we did it and, and why we did it. But anyhow, uh, to make it short, it is a research. It is not a foresight exercise, okay? It has been made in a bottom-up way, not a top-down one, which means that we had absolutely no idea when we began the research what we would find. What we found was that Many people around the world, in very different uh, parts of the world, countries and generation, are already doing new things in a new ways. And, and that's what. So what we did is to collect information, this information, to bring it up and then to try to see if, if there is a global image of it. And it happens that this image is this model. But this model is not something that that is here to impose to anyone. It is just that the, the king of Morocco decided to adopt this model as, as a, a framework for his own policy. So that's it. He asked us to decline the model, to, to, to translate it into policy making. So we made policy design in different areas of the model. And now he has selected uh, the priorities 
from the range of the policy design we, we did, and he is, uh, he is giving orders, I would say, to, to implement it. That's it, but it is, it is not something to impose to others, it's just saying, okay, so that's what, what we have seen from what we have studied, and it happens that uh, this, uh, this government uh, wanted to apply it. That's it. Thank you, Fabian. Thank you for uh, answering that question. Uh, um, Yvonne, yeah, you have a next question. Thank you, Sarah. Um, congratulations to all for the great presentations. And my question goes to Kuniko uh, for this uh, Society 5.0. Uh, I was very impressed when uh, Prime Minister Shinzo Abe uh, gave the speech in the last World Economic Forum on the, this uh, Society 5.0 strategy. So my question is, within the government, what is the roadmap? How to implement such a transformative uh, approach and, and strategy, in, uh, even in the long term. Uh, can, can you show my slide? Okay. Yeah, thank you very much for your question. Now, that's why we needed to do this foresight survey, because we need to make uh, some uh, roadmap and also need to make uh, scenarios. So, but of course, this is a long-term um, plan, so... Uh, yes. Ah, uh, yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Yes. 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 And actually, this is uh, uh, involving uh, the many issues. Especially, uh, as I said, we are very aging. We are faced on the very super aging society, but not only for that uh, aging issue, but also uh, our population has been decreasing, and uh, but our life is getting longer. So, which means uh, government. That doesn't get the many income anymore, so which means um, we cannot enhance the science and technology anymore, probably because of the shortage of uh, the income of government. So therefore, we try to improve those issues, especially the people should live along without any uh, problem. I mean, so they shouldn't go to, because now many elderly people want to go to the hospital because they feel alone or lonely or maybe feel sad, something. So that's why we try to provide some community for them. And also the education, also the very important for the elderly people because they are they wanted to go to university, but uh, they didn't have an uh, opportunity. And so therefore, we also try to de-organizing <clears throat> the university structure as well, because uh, our young gen uh, we don't have many young generation anymore, but we have uh, 780 universities. It's too much. So therefore, we are trying to concentrate some of the top uh, the universities and provide the fund, uh, the budget to the, those uh, top, pri uh, top uh, um, 10 uh, universities. So this society, 5.0 issue, including everything. So therefore, we needed to know the, which technology we need enhance. I mean, we needed to make a priority of the, um, the technology. So. <laughs> So therefore, to know the um, the future vision, what kind of uh, desirable future uh, our and uh, the colleagues wanted to, to make it, something like that. But that's uh, also mentioned that technology will also make society too. So that's why we need to make. Uh, the sounds based on those visions and the technology issues. So, the more detail later. Thank you, Kuniko, for the clarification and explanation. Uh, that uh, Professor Dr. Mu uh, is back here. Uh, there was a question for you earlier. I would um, <laughs> yeah, like to repeat a question. It's not such an urgent, but I, I just understood that. Uh, the, the international collaborations for which you showed in the, the graph is due to uh, Chinese Chinese collaboration where one of the partners is in the US. Yeah. yeah. That, that is 
lives for one another. Maybe in terms of vacations. Yes. Yes. Is uh, uh, is equal the others altogether. Okay. Right. Thank you, uh, Dr. Mu. Are there any other questions for the speakers? Sure. Question, and that's also a bit of a remark. Um, I, I think if we, if in these foresight studies, there is an implicit model of central government, often, uh, whether that is the king of Maroc or another type of central government. Uh, I, I think we need a type of reflection on that, uh, because what these foresight models do in different in terms in relation to different models of government. For example, the Chinese have a very explicit model of government, which is very different from what we know in Western Europe. Uh, it's extremely different. In, uh, uh, in a certain sense. Uh, and even in the uh, uh, remarks of Ravetz, I think uh, the idea of having a collective artificial intelligence it's a bit related, it's a bit a step also further away, but I think even if you, that's also a hierarchical model in the end, uh, the collective intelligence should be opened up as communication structures, uh, which are more horizontal, and where learning processes are, are working, and yeah, I thought that that would enrich, could, uh, because if it is a communication system, collective action, then it can also interact with digital developments, which are also communication systems. So we are talking then at the... Uh, I wanted to say that I think that type of reflection has to be brought into this conference, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Right, thank you for your remark. Uh, would anybody like to add on to that? Yes, Dr. Mu? Uh, I, uh, because you mentioned the Chinese model, but uh, I would like to say not so total. Uh, uh, I think, uh, for example, you know, the technology foresight in China, you know, uh, the result, I think this is the public goods. This is uh, for the, uh, the stakeholders to use it. It's uh, not all these uh, 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 technology are uh, uh, given to the uh, enterprise to force them to uh, develop this technology. This is not the, uh, the, the case. So I think nowadays increase more regional government interest in that, and increase more enterprise interest in the future technologies. So I think uh, maybe uh, to some extent we can say because of the, the progress made uh, in enterprises, uh, their technology capacity during the past uh, 15 years increased very fast. So they have uh, lots of uh, uh, collaboration with uh, universities. And uh, this is uh, even globally. So as I said, the publication uh, is just one part. And also uh, the PCT uh, patent, uh, this is uh, collaborating with others. So that is, uh, uh, and the government uh, play a very important role, but uh, in terms of technology, uh, it's in very limited areas uh, because uh, government have not so many uh, money uh, to invest all. Uh, that is, uh, Shall I elaborate on the example? Because I come from the Netherlands, and the Netherlands is a small country, and it almost has no uh, uh, forecasting capacity. Uh, well, France, for example, is much more like China. There, there's much more of that forecasting capacity. Yeah. So countries are different, and, yeah. and government systems are different, yeah. and it makes a difference also for what the forecasting activities can be. Yeah, to some extent, it's different, very different. 
Mm. All right, thank you. Thank you for sharing your thoughts. Yeah. So Singapore is also a very small country, and uh, we also recognize uh, the need to uh, be very nimble and uh, and and have our five-year plan. Um, you know, every five years we we will have um, uh, you know look at uh, where we have gone, uh, where, what we have done, and where is the future going to be. And uh, it's interesting that you uh, raised you know the need to actually uh, invite greater participation uh, from the crowd, from the citizens, from um, you know the community, and I think the technologies uh, nowadays, social media have enabled us, um, you know, to be able to uh, have a greater uh, level of engagement. Um, so the diversions, you know, of the stakeholders involved has certainly increased. However, as what uh, Dr. Mu mentioned, that uh, as a small country, we also don't have. Uh, unlimited resources, there's still a need to uh, prioritize uh, resources and, um, you know, set goals and, uh, um, and allocate um, the, the budget yeah, to those that are most critical to the country's development. And, and uh, there must be some kind of a ownership uh, to continue to track progress as well as to hold accountable to uh, for the budget that is being allocated. Yep. So are there any other questions for the presenters? Suggestions, yes. Uh, for the organizers, uh, it, it was very interesting to, to see a much larger participation of multilateral institutions. And we're going to talk about the BRICS tomorrow. And uh, but uh, uh, we are having a, a nice uh, set of presentation that show what's happened at national level. But one of the key issues I think that pressing the world population are actually dealt by multilateral. Uh, organizations. It would be interesting to hear from them what are the perspectives at a global level, you know, taking into account what's happening in not only in developed countries, but also in countries in Africa, in, in other areas where, uh, uh, including, uh, 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 would allow for some other more in-depth perspectives uh, could bring to the surface. Uh, one of them being values. And, uh, you know, we heard some steep V analysis and uh, the V of the steep V is not necessarily well tackled by those foresight exercises. So it would be interesting to have some of the key uh, multilateral you know, organizations dealing with that coming forward and, and have a, a much larger perspective that would unite some, uh, you know, national perspective being developed, uh, especially because of some of the issues, uh, and I, I like it very much what uh, Fabienne has shown, because he, she dealt with uh, issues which are not 100% technological, but bring about, you know, is democracy growing or going down in the world? Is this going to impact or not going to impact what now is going to happen to the planet? Issues such as this would be extremely interesting to, mm. to hear from multilateral uh, organizations, if possible. Yes, certainly. I think that is a very good suggestion. Yeah, the inclusion of uh, value into the equation and then uh, the definition and the taxonomy of this thing called value. Maybe we can even borrow from the disciplines of uh, science and engineering on, uh, you know, looking at the value-based, uh, um, you know, measurement um, or visualization as well. Um, thank you, Marcio. Yes, Jose, you have a question? Uh, yeah, also to Dr. Mo Rangpin. Um, uh, um, just before uh, our Indian uh, friend, he, he was talking that he was uh, worried or not totally happy about the solar strategy in India. So my question is about what is happening with renewables in China, because you obviously had so much to talk about, you couldn't focus uh, even in energy. You, you only had a few sentences about coal, having better coal. But uh, China has been a powerhouse in terms of uh, solar energy and wind energy. So how do you see the renewables uh, strategy in China? And are you satisfied or a bit dissatisfied like our Indian friend? Uh, uh, I, I'm not expert uh, uh, energy technology, uh, but uh, I think China is a big country. Yeah. So natural resources, lots of coals, and this is the realities. So the clean production 
clean energy. So lots of new technology relating the gasolization of these uh, uh, coals and, uh, <coughs> and related technologies. At the same time, I think it's renewable, especially the, uh, the wind power and the solar, uh, increase very fast. Uh, in terms of the, 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 <coughs> the volume, I think that's the number one. Yeah? But in the future, still, it's, connect, it's not easy to compa compare with the uh, clean uh, uh, use of the coals, I think. This is uh, in, in terms of volume, the, si the, the, the ratio. Yeah, ratio is still a very, very big one. But uh, potential, uh, maybe uh, the ratio changed. So that is uh, Chinese situations. We need uh, the clean uh, technology for coal. Yeah. So true for India too, actually. India is investing a lot on uh, retrofication of uh, existing power plants yeah. and uh, to adopt clean coal technologies, yeah. uh, which was earlier not there. So advanced coal technologies are being taken into account and improvement of existing thermal power plants because the power demand of India cannot be met as of now through renewables. At least 70 percent still are dependent on, on uh, coal. We are, and probably, unfortunately, Indian coals are highly ash content, oh, yeah. high ash content. So, oh, yeah. And all the clean coal technology developed elsewhere for low ash content. So one is to one, we cannot use it even. Mm -hmm. So there is a lot of dilemma in this uh, process mm -hmm. because power demand is increasing. Because India is developing fast, and economy maybe in a slow mode now, but is going, growing. In that context, power supply has to be there. <coughs> you cannot compromise with that. Mm. Uh, and manufacturing, uh, our target is 25% GDP from manufacturing sector by 2035. Mm. So if that is so, then a lot of power is required. And uh, if we totally depend on renewable, it won't happen in the near future. That's what our uh, study says so. Yeah. Uh, in western part of China, the province, uh, you know, the wind power, solar energy, and the price decreased. It's a competitive, uh, uh, competitive ball, uh, with uh, the coals and uh, the uh, the oil. Uh, so in some reason, yeah. But for us, we are dependent on you for solar cells. Yeah, we can so, so collaborate. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you for uh, your input. And uh, it's already five uh, twenty-two, and um, so we are actually quite on time uh, for our session. <laughs> And uh, okay, so to wrap up, I'd like to thank the presenters uh, for the, you know, who have actually um, been very disciplined and uh, managed to have six presentations uh, within 60 minutes and gave us plenty of time, uh, 30 minutes for uh, Q&A. Uh, and we also want to thank the, um, the rest of um, the participants for staying with us and, um, and raising such interesting questions and give us, uh, you know, the chance to take the discussion to a greater level. So I'd like to um, close this session now. Right, so thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, if you allow a few, few, few messages for you. First of all, I fully agree with uh, Marcio about, uh, about values. We, 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 we've been thinking about values and we include this issue more and more. And of course, it's a good idea to invite somebody to the next events here who, I, who could uh, make it in the international, uh, international uh, perspective yeah this is one point thank you very much uh, another point is also i, I joined sasara in uh, in congratulating all of you and uh, thank you very much for for all people who presented today but not only and for to those who who asked questions and also to those who uh, who, who attended this event I, I guess it was very interesting uh, my my message is that uh, for t t tomorrow we'll have a session devoted to science technology innovation policy it will start at uh, half past nine uh, so you all of you are invited and my last message is if you if you could uh, uh, if you could go here we can make a join uh, photographs here with all all of you okay you're invited please uh, thank you very much and